Today's session is developing a capability statement. And on the agenda today, I plan to cover what is a capability statement because there may be some businesses on the call today that are not aware of what a capability statement is. Why a capability statement is necessary. What is the buyer looking for when they're looking at your business capability statement? Is there more than one type of capability statement? So I will cover that there is more than one type. How should it be designed? That's one of the questions that we usually get. So I'll cover any type of design, templates, font, that information, and then impactful characteristics. So first getting started on what is a capability statement. Your capability statement is a living document and it should be inviting to the reader. Its purpose is to provide the buyer with specific information about your business. It's also called a business resume and it's recommended that you have more than one developed. During this session, I plan to cover general. I've included a sample of one version from our capability statement packet, which will also be provided to you by tomorrow morning with the email. So why is it necessary? And I'll cover these four that you see on the screen. Landing contracts, standing out from the crowd, marketing tools, as well as building relationships with business and procurement decision makers. So landing a contract. Many government institutions require a capability statement as part of the request for information or sources sought to make a set aside determination. This document, it helps them to assess a company's qualifications and experiences to determine if they're a responsible, responsive, excuse me, and responsible vendor and a good fit for the project. Concerning marketing tools, a capability statement can be used as a marketing tool for various purposes. You can use it during introductions, presentations, or proposals to give potential clients a quick overview of what you do and how you add value. Now, how is it used to stand out? Your capability statement can differentiate your business from others in a competitive market by highlighting your unique strengths, experiences, and accomplishments that you then can convince potential clients that you're the best choice for the job. And when you're building relationships, if you're out at networking events, uh, there may be, for example, communication that, hey, you know, I am actively looking for a business that can provide this service, but throughout our networking events, through our business opportunity sessions, I'm not able to identify any. Well, during some of the outreach events that some of my team members, we attend, the information could be communicated to the small businesses. Uh, so those are just a few ways, and I'm going to go into, in the next few slides, examples of each one of the, ne uh, the necessity and how it could be used. Before I go on, I see that there are a few questions. Does a capability statement template exist that we can download as a starting point? So I answered that. I will be providing uh, some templates. You don't necessarily have to use the same formatting, the information within those templates. Um, it's not going to be, it may not be specific to your business. We just used a few examples to cover across many different industries. So you could use those templates or you could use your own. We are a new company, have not gained any past experience as of yet. How do we go about implementing past experience in our capability statement? So we show that we can show experience in our statement. I'll actually cover that later on. So I'm going to place that it was answered verbally, but I will cover that information later on. So here's an example of a sources sought. And this is a part of landing contracts, how it can be used. In this sources sought, they actually pulled from SAM.gov. This can be used as part of your marketing, um, I mean, excuse me, your marketing research. It says the capability statement, provide a brief capability and interest in providing. And then I also highlighted the government is requesting a short statement regarding the company's ability to provide the services outlined in the statement of work. So they also said, and I highlighted that in green because I didn't want to miss that point as well. Any commercial brochures or currently existing marketing material may also be submitted with a capability statement. So starting off at the bottom, sometimes businesses mistake a capability statement with a briefing. 
So I like this source of salt and the information that was included in there so that it helps you to understand that there is a difference between your brochures or what you would use in your PowerPoint presentations as your briefing and what exactly the procurement decision maker is looking for when they're looking at, or I'm sorry, your briefings, your brochures or your marketing materials, which sometimes are your briefings, and what exactly they're looking for in your business capability statement. So again, going back up to the top, when they said provide a capability and an interest, um, I'm sorry, provide a brief capability and interest in providing the services as listed in the attachment, that's exactly what they're looking for whatever they have listed in their statement of work. So sometimes you get a question from businesses that ask, you know, well, what exactly should I include in there? You, like I said, I'll be discussing a general capability statement, but with the multiple ones, what you wanna do is if you already have your capability statement, your general capability statement already developed, you wanna go back, look at the statement of work, and then see where the information that was listed in the statement of work what on your capability statement at that time, how does it apply to that? Is it the information that they're looking for? And if it's not the information that they're looking for, go ahead, especially if it's specific to a the solicitation or specific to the project, go ahead and pull that information out so that it can be short and brief to the point what exactly it is that your business perform, what type of service or product your business is providing and straight to the point for what that procurement decision maker is looking for. Uh, here's another example. And this one came from a solicitation that was on SAM.gov as well. It says, provide a brief capability statement that covers the information in the statement of work. Your responses must address capabilities that are specific to the service or items required in the statement of work. See how it's stating, you know, it's talking about the statement of work again. And in there, it's saying they need your company name. They need your set, your cage, your UEI, your company address, your mailing address, the point of contact, who should they contact? They have any questions. The telephone number of that point of contact, the email address of that point of contact. What is your socioeconomic data? Are you a service disabled veteran owned small business, a woman owned small business, AA? Think about this as I'm speaking about it. Do you currently have it on your capability statement? And not just do you currently have it on your capability statement, is it visible? If someone is skimming your capability statement, you know, if they, if they have to look at about 200 other capability statements and they're trying to identify if they should set this project aside for a, a woman-owned small business or a veteran-owned small business, is that information included on there where they can easily see, oh, this is a woman on small business that could pro you know, provide that service or provide that product. Also company business size status, names and types of current federal contracts and contract vehicles. So you can also include that information on there as well. And I highlighted in green where it says the name and type of current federal contracts and contract vehicles, that could be utilized for the scope of the requirement because sometimes we get questions about, hey, I am a subcontractor and I am subcontracting for uh, you know, a, another large business or a large small business. And they actually are, you know, they have the, they're on the contracting vehicle, they're on the GSA schedule. Can I add that information to my capability statement? And our response is no because that is that business, you're subcontracting with them. So usually if you're subcontracting on your capability statement, you're gonna be documenting who it is that you are essentially working for, essentially um, a, assisting in, in providing your service. And if that is that business, large or small, that's the information that you'll include in, on there. If, it's the, if you're the prime and it's actually the agency, you've been awarded the contract, your business has been awarded the contract, then you include the agency information on there. And then um, lastly, for as this example for solicitation, when it says vendors with GSA schedule shall provide the contract number of that schedule and expiration date, that goes back to what I was speaking about before. If you are not on the GSA schedule, you're just subcontracting for the business, the prime that's on there, then you won't include that information on there, but you will include the information that you are subcontracting with that business. And then Nate's codes, product service codes. And then on here, it says all items should be clearly identified. So that goes back to what I was saying before about your business visibility. You wanna make sure 
that not just um, that your business is visible to the buyer outside of us discussing your capability statement, but that the information is not jumbled up, uh, you know, looking like an essay, essentially multiple paragraphs uh, that you, they that your business information that they are looking for, like what is noted in the solicitation, that they can it can easily be identified. So I'll look at the questions before I go to the next uh, slide. Is the UEI the same as your business IRS uh, identifying number? No, your UEI can be uh, accessed or you can find it on SAM.gov. So it's generated for you when you set up your account on the system for award management on SAM.gov. Can this additional information requirements be added to our cover letter specific to the solicitation? Yes, that information can be added on there, but if they're asking for your capability statement, you want to always make sure that you're looking at the statement of work. Um, if it's asking for that information in your capability statement, you want to make sure that you're including that information where they're asking for it. Because if you're essentially providing too much uh, documentation, for example, if they're not looking for a cover letter, they're only making their assessments off of your capability statement, you're kind of counting yourself out um, of the competition because if they're solely just going to be looking at the capability statement at that moment to make those determinations, they're not going to think, let me look at this additional document, which is the business cover letter to see if they added that information there. They're only going to be looking for what they mentioned in that uh, notice type for what they're looking for. Yes, uh, I stated this webinar is being recorded and you'll receive a link, a copy of the link to our YouTube channel by tomorrow morning. And I just want to pause for a second. Can everyone see my slides? Oh, yes, I'm still on slide six. I haven't moved on from slide six yet. So just let me know if you can't see when I move on to slide seven. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, now here's an example of standing out from the crowd. So in this, and again, all this information I pulled from SAM.gov. So if you feel like, hey, you know, I'm looking, I need to do a little bit more market research to see which agencies to identify, maybe to see with those within those agencies for this specific type of um, service that they're looking for. What is something that they're always looking for that maybe if my business is not prepared, I can go ahead and add that to my business plan as, you know, uh, something that I need to prepare for, a certification that I need to get, uh, any type of registrations that I may need, all of that information on there. You can actually uh, use SAM.gov, and we've been using it as part of our trainings for SAM.gov, uh, USAspending.gov is part of your marketing. So standing out from the crowd. In this example, the contractor shall provide equipment listed below that allows business staff the ability to use all equipment in a seamless and user-friendly fashion. So the contractor shall provide all equipment. And when they mention equipment, if you, if you look down to the bottom, it says number four. It says cabling, including category um, six wiring, cables and related terminations, support and grounding hardware shall be furnished, installed, wired, tested, labeled by the contractor. And then down in the green, which says all equipment shall be delivered, installed, configured, tested, and fully operational, no later than 120 calendar days after award. This is great useful information that you can use to include in your capability statement. Why? Well, let's start at the bottom in the green. When it says that uh, fully operational, all of this should be fully operational, no later than 120 calendar days after award. If you've already been working on previous projects, and you've actually been able to complete projects in less than 120 calendar days. Let's just say you were able to complete it in 60 calendar days or 90 calendar days. That's some good information to include on there because then it shows that even though the procurement decision maker, the buyer is giving you 120 calendar days, you can actually complete it in a shorter amount of time. That's useful information Why? from standing out from the crowd because what if your other competitors, they can only complete it in 120 calendar days, exactly at 120 calendar days. Or maybe they can complete it at 101 you know, calendar days. But your business has been consistent and you've worked on these projects before, you've provided these services before, 
you know you can do it in 90 calendar days. As part of a differentiator on your capability statement, that could be listed. Of course, you'd have to do your competitive analysis for this example here, do your competitive analysis to identify whether or not your competitors or some of your competitors, because you may not see for all, but those competitors that are on the same uh, stage as your business, that they aren't able to provide this service within 120 calendar days. If your business is able to provide it in 60 calendar days, that you are essentially, if not the only business, is able to provide it within 60 calendar days. Then you can include that information on your differentiator. That's gonna help you stand out from your competitors. Let's just say that your competitors, and I am not a subject matter expert in wiring, so for anybody that is on the call right now, that is, forgive me if this is not a good example, but say, for example, within here, it says category six wiring. Say, for example, only your competitors, uh, well, within your industry, what's well known is maybe a category two or a category uh, four wiring. If you have experience in using, you know, category six wiring, and let's just say that's unique, that a lot of your competitors aren't able to do, you can include that information on your business capability statement. So while your competitors may, this is a hypothetical, may be saying, hey, you don't necessarily need category six wiring. You know, category three wiring will actually work for your business. What the buyer is looking for, you can actually say, hey, this is what we're used to working. You know, this is what we're used to working with. We are experienced and we can actually provide those services. Even as far as when it goes to being able to furnish, install, wire and test, Maybe your competitors aren't able to do all of those that the buyer is requesting. But if your business is able to, then you can document that information in your capability statement when you are submitting it. So I'm going to stop for a second to see if there are any questions. Is there a company that provides the capability statement that your office uh, recommends? I don't know of any companies. We've actually developed um, or actually updated what we already had as far as some examples of capability statements. And we pulled some uh, that used to be with uh, the Small Business Administration, if I'm not mistaken. Is there a NAICS validation process or how easy it is to change at NAICS codes to your capability statements, SAM.gov profile? I'm not sure about that question, um, but I would say go to SAM.gov. It is managed by GSA, if I'm not mistaken. And if you reach out to their customer service, they'll be able to assist you with updating your SAM.gov profile. What about projects that are extended due to the owner design changes? So I'm not sure um, what your question, because I mean, there are various different factors involved. If you'd like to email us to you know, be more specific, um, then I can be able to, I'll see if I can be able to respond to your question. But I mean, there are many different, uh, various different factors that may be involved when it comes to whether or not a project is completed on time or if it's extended. Um, when I used as far as if you're, if you're um, asking that question pertaining to the example that I provided, if you're stating that, for example, you know, I wasn't, my business was not able to complete it within 120 days because it was extended uh, due to the owner's changes. You don't necessarily have to include that information in your business capability statement. What I was saying was, if you've identified, and this is just overall in general, if you've identified that you are actually faster at completing these projects faster than your competitors, you could include that information on your business capability statement, especially in the differentiator section. This is not, um, I'm not recommending that it goes in like the past performance where you're stating, hey, we were supposed to, you know, provide, um, we were supposed to complete this project within 120 days, and we actually had to end up going over 120 days, I don't recommend including that information over on the past performance side um, at all or at all. But if, for example, you've noticed or during your research, you have identified that, you know, your business is capable of performing on these projects faster than your competitors and putting that information that way. I'm an expert in the area. CAT 6 is the common standard or CAT 6. Thank you so much, Alfonso. Okay, so I'm going to move on to, I don't see any more questions, so I'm going to move on to um, slide eight. I apologize, I saw a, um, a comment that says, Wendy compares cat six to cat eight. <laughs> I said, I am not a subject matter expert, just using, using them as examples. Thank you, guys. 
All right, so on this slide, standing out from the crowd, this is an example of what I was previously talking about. So for example, on this slide, on the bottom, we're gonna look at, well, I'm sorry, on the core competencies and past performance. I actually filled in uh, from one of our examples of a capability statement. On the left side, version one and version two. On the left side for version one, it says that for the core competencies, cable installation and maintenance, blueprint print, uh, reading and interpretation, safety procedures, and excuse me, I have to actually zoom in a little bit, it's a little small. Um, high voltage electrical work for industrial settings, and then low voltage cabling for data and communication systems. And this is compared to the sources saw, I'm sorry, not the sources saw, but the notice type that we just looked at here. So version one had this information for the core competencies. Version two says electrical knowledge, math skills, problem solving, attention to detail, cable installation and maintenance, safety procedures, communication and customer service. One of the things that we're looking at here for core competencies is which one is actually identifying how it is, how their business is able to help or successfully perform on this project that is mentioned here in this uh, notice type. So going over to past performance, I use an example. You look at both versions, uh, both were completed at the same time. Version one, troubleshooted and repaired a critical power distribution failure, preventing a two-day office shutdown, implemented energy efficient solutions, reducing light costs by 15%. The project was completed two weeks ahead of schedule and within budget. On the right side, responsible for fixing the office power failure, created efficient solutions and helped the business. Now thinking in terms of the buyer, if you were in the buyer's position, and you had to identify whether or not you would award, and of course there are many other different factors uh, when making an award than just your capability statement, but let's just say we're just solely looking at the capability statement right now. Can you tell me in the chat, which one would you award, which business? Would it be the first one or would it be the second one? Like is the first one or the second one really identifying how they can successfully perform on this project? Whereas you won't have to turn around, the buyer won't have to turn around and award it out to another business a year later because the project still hasn't been completed. Thank you everyone for participating. That is, that is correct. You wanna make, and this is an example that you wanna make sure that you are detailing as much as possible. When you're looking at uh, the past performance, things that are highlighted there is uh, they prevented a two day office shutdown by the services that they provided, um, they, the percentage that's in there, quantifiable information, reducing lighting costs by 15%. Buyers, and I'm pretty sure for you guys as well, you, you're looking at that as well on saving money. They're gonna look for that, for saving money, you know, uh, whether you're at your budget, but definitely not going over your budget. And loving, like I used for an example, the project was completed two weeks ahead of time. Doesn't necessarily mean that you should, if you were awarded a, a you know, contract and you're working on a project that, hey, I'm, you know, I need to make sure that I'm completing all of these ahead of time. Sometimes that is not the case. Sometimes it's going to be, you know, completed right at the schedule. Um, I've seen where some have actually gone over, but you definitely want to stick with what was planned out if you can. Of course, there are other different factors as well. So you just, you know, think about those in that term when you're documenting that information uh, on your capability statement. So before I move on, I'm just gonna see if there are any questions. Do you have an example of a capability statement for a product-based business? Um, no, we don't have uh, examples of capability statements specific to a product or service. I just use this services as an example on here throughout this um, throughout this session. But if you'd like, we actually do offer one-on-one capability statement reviews where we assist businesses. Uh, those are about 30 minutes, uh, 30 minute sessions for businesses. So if you are interested in that, we can, and I'm going to put the information in the chat. You can send us an email. Okay, moving on. So marketing tool, how can it be used as a marketing tool? I created this little, of course I didn't create the picture, but this scenario of um, someone that is actually speaking to a buyer. So as they say, as you can see from my capability statement, something that makes my business unique is that 
Unlike large firms with standardized processes, we can offer a customized program management plan that caters to the unique needs of the contract. You see how as you, and this is the person verbally speaking, when you think about your capability statement, think of it as a way for your capability statement to just like in this scenario, speak for your business so that the buyer does not have any questions or should have minimal questions that they have any concerning whether or not they should award your business the project. Here's another example, and this one is concerning building relationships with decision makers. I actually have two different scenarios that are here. One is a one-on-one -on -one meeting, which is at the bottom to the right-hand side, and the other one is in one of the business opportunity sessions. So in this, at the top screen, in this business opportunity session with my federal agencies, that's the name of the agency for this example, they have listed and outlined what exactly they're looking for for the business. This is helping, and this is ahead of time. So it's saying they're looking for facility janitorial services, Nate's code 561-720 in fiscal year 25, the first quarter, and the location is going to be in Atlanta. And in this meeting, they will be discussing, uh, well, they are discussing what exactly they're looking for the buyer, I'm sorry, the um, company to provide on this project that is getting ready to, uh, you know, getting ready to come out. The information, all this information is being discussed in this business opportunity session. Here is the moment where this information you're collecting, you're already going to, you're collecting it, you're going to be documenting it onto your capability statement. So that by the time this project or the, the notice type actually is released for this um, this project, your capability statement will all be already be provided or it'll already be developed, excuse me. So on the second example, the agency is looking for a small business that adheres to the federal regulations for cemetery services and guidelines for headstone installation. In here, in this 101, the um, the buyer is actually communicating what exactly they're looking for. And what you see is the business actually documenting that information. What they're going to do is, if it's not already there, they're going back and they're going to add that information onto their capability statement. So that when the solicitation get ready to come out, they're able to go ahead and, you know, go ahead and submit that information, which is specific to their, um, to what the buyer is looking for. So also I wanna make sure that I mention on this slide, the Pathfinder tool. VA does have a, a VA dot, and I'm gonna place it in the chat. It's VA dot Pathfinder, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Pathfinder dot VA dot gov. Pathfinder is a centralized location of resources for businesses, but I wanna note the marketing research database uh, that, VA has, and I may say that, may have said that incorrectly, marketing research database, but the marketing database that they have, I do recommend for any businesses that have not submitted their capabilities into this marketing tool to go ahead when you have a chance to submit your information into the marketing tool. VA buyers are actively using this marketing tool when they are conducting their market research and they're trying to identify whether or not there are any businesses, small businesses that are out there that can provide the services that they're looking for and also any small businesses specific to a socioeconomic classification, for example, veteran owned or AA or hub zone that are able to provide those services to, to identify whether or not uh, that project can be set aside. So in this example, what is the buyer looking for? Another example that I pulled this information from Sam SBA certified veteran owned small business that can apply herbicides to all improved turfs within the cemetery located in Washington, DC. They also said 100% of visually prominent areas are generally weed free. The fertilizer program shall consist of three applications per year. Out of all the information that the buyer is communicating right now to these uh, small businesses that you see on the screen, what is highlighted here is they're looking for a SBA certified veteran owned small business. So on your business capability statement, because I'm always going to tie this back to your capability statement. On your business capability statement, do you have your logo that you're an SBA certified veteran owned small business? Do you have your logo that you are a SBA certified woman owned small business or uh, SBA certified AA 
or SBA certified hub zone, SBA certified uh, service disabled veteran owned small business? Do you have the logos for that? Where are they located on your capability statement? Is it visible? And I'm just covering information that I've um, just talked about so far. What I mean by what I mean by is it visible? Is it somewhere where they can easily see that? Oh, okay, this business is a in in this example, this business is a SBA certified veteran owned business. I see their logo, or I see documented somewhere. Uh, within their capability statement, easily visible, not a, a, a big paragraph or five paragraphs of information, but section out, and I'm going to cover that a little bit towards the end, section out where I can see underneath their business uh, data that they are a SBA certified veteran on small business. Also, is it listed that they have experience in applying herbicides to turfs and not necessarily as cemetery, but if they have that experience, is it listed there in the past performance? That's in your past performance section on your business capability statement. Where is it located? Um, also, is it located in your core competencies that you have experience in applying herbicides? Now, again, here's another area that I am not experienced in, so forgive me if I'm saying this incorrectly, but for herbicides, what if you needed um, a certification or registration to be able to apply them? If that's the case, then you would know that, okay, I need to include that information on my business capability statement. Also, program shall consist of three applications per year. If you know that with your business schedule, you're very busy. You may be a small business, but you're very busy. If you know that you're not able to provide three applications per year, whether or not you're busy, whether or not you know personnel is low, whether or not it's just you, it's a one-man job, a one-woman job. If you know that you're not able to, then this helps you in terms of, again, market research. How many other, and let's just stick with the National Cemetery Administration, because this would have came from the National Cemetery Administration. How many other solicitations out there came from the National Cemetery Administration where they required my uh, a business, I'm not gonna say my business, a business to um, apply herbicides to the cemeteries, because this is nationwide, herbicides more than three or more times a year. Let's just even say two or more times a year. Now that helps me as a business owner to plan out that, okay, if I'm looking for opportunities with the National Cemetery Administration with VA, and I'm seeing that they are consistently requesting two or three or more applications per year when I'm, you know, for these type of projects that I need to either, if it's just me, one person, I'm not able to do it, then I need to increase my, you know, personnel so that I can be able to effectively compete on this contract because I can't compete if what they're asking for, I don't meet those requirements. So before I move on, I'm going to see if we have any questions. How do you certify for those classifications? Do I need to do more than self-certify in STEM? So for the certifications that I mentioned with the Small Business Administration, go to, um, and you can actually type it in your search engine, the Small Business Administration, or SBA, and then say certifications. It's actually on the Small Business Administration website, and you can actually uh, either type in SBA, certify, uh, SDBOSB for service disabled veteran on small business, or SBA, certify, AA, and that information will pull up for you. So you can use any search engine for that. Where does one find the logo for the veteran-owned business? You actually have to uh, go through the whole certification process to apply for the certification process with SBA, and then they will send you the logo for the uh, veteran-owned business. If you have gone through the process and you have not received it, reach out to the customer service so that they can email you or mail, I'm not sure uh, what mode that they use to provide that information, but so that they can send the information your way so that you can include that on your business capability statement. And I just wanna request everyone, since I am the only person here today, uh, usually I have some colleagues that are here to assist me with the Q&A in the chat. If you could please place your information in the chat, I mean, in the Q&A, excuse me. It's easier for me to follow to make sure that I'm responding to your questions uh, in real time. So here's another example. This is the second example for what is the buyer looking for? Uh, SBA certified, woman owned small business. So I'm not gonna go over that. Went over that with the previous example for veteran owned. You wanna make sure that that information is easily visible. 
if they're looking for, if they know that it's set aside, they're solely just going to be looking at woman-owned, SBA certified woman-owned businesses. NAITS code 562111. If you know that your NAITS code is not 562111, you would, of course, you would not um, look at this potential opportunity. But is the information on your capability statement and you actually provide services within NAITS code 562111? If you do, then you want to make sure you include not just the NAITS code, but I use product service code as an example as well, because sometimes you may see solicitations that have the product service code. So you want to make sure that that information is included on your capability statement, because that is within the notice type, what they say that they were looking for. In this example, it says furnish all labor material, all labor, excuse me, material, tools, equipment, and supervision necessary to collect, store, remove, transport, and dispose of non-hazardous solid waste cardboard and single stream recycling. So if the buyer is telling you this is what they're looking for, when you start tailoring your general capability statement, you wanna make sure that not only that you can provide the services that they're looking for, but that you're actually noting that in your capability statement. So you'll include, for example, in your past performance, if you have any that you've you know, provided within those previous projects of uh, the labor, the materials, the tools, the equipment and supervision. It may not have been all the above. So let's just say, for example, in a previous um, a previous project that you worked on, you only provided the labor and the materials. You want to make sure that you're documenting that information so that the um, person that is viewing your capability statement, they're able to identify that, oh, okay, they are able to provide that service. As well as on the latter end where it says collecting, storing, removing, transporting. If you were only, you know, on previous projects, one project you were only collecting, another project you were only transporting, another um, project you were only disposing of cardboard, not non-hazardous solid waste or single stream recycling. You wanna make sure that either that information is being documented either or, uh, that information is being documented in your capabilities or your core competencies on your capability statement, or it's all, I'm not, I keep saying or, but I mean, and the information is documented in your past performance. How long does it take to get the certification from start to finish once I submit the application? I'm not sure, but if you reach out to the Small Business Administration, they should be able to assist you uh, with that question. I believe it may be, and I think this is a stretch, but no more than 90 days. Um, and that's a stretch. I don't even think it, it really takes that long. But when you reach out to their customer service, they'll be able to tell you real time how long it's taking for them to process uh, certifications for whichever socioeconomic rights creation, excuse me, you're looking for. How do we get a meeting in front of the agencies we want to provide services or products to? That really depends on, um, say, for example, here at OSBU, we host direct access program. Uh, in our direct access program, we host business opportunity sessions, information sessions, one oh one. So going over to our site, and I can actually place that in the chat for you. Going over to our site, identifying whether or not, excuse me, talking and uh, typing at the same time is not the best. But um, go over there and identify some different type of events or sessions that uh, may benefit your business with getting in front of the buyer. Also, um, connecting with your small business liaison. Sometimes when you're inputting your data into, for example, Pathfinder, when procurement decision makers are actively looking for businesses, they may reach out to you and ask you, and it, and it has happened, it is act, uh, actually happening now, where they'll reach out to you and request for you to do a briefing with the buyers. I'm sorry, if you give me one second. trying to pull up our event page so I can place the information into the chat. Okay, I'll place it into the chat once it loads up. My internet's kind of going slow right now. I apologize about that. So I'll upload that, um, the link into the chat once it uploads. Um, how do, I, I read that one. Is there a certification process for the NAICS code or does the business owner decide which one aligns to their services? So you would decide which one of the NAICS codes align with your service. If you're not sure, here's a great example that I usually give to businesses. Go to usaspending.gov and we actually offer training. I think I said that before um, on our YouTube channel, brief training about 15 minutes of information on how to identify the buyer and how to identify um, your competitors. But 
if you just uh, typed in the, the the specific service that you're looking for in the keywords, for example, um, from here, uh, janitorial. If I just typed in janitorial services and pulled up the information, and you could actually actually you could do it two ways. You can go on the census website and pull up NAICS and type in the keyword janitorial, uh, which is an easier way. And then you can also go on usaspending.gov and you can actually um, just filter off of the agency, which would generate a lot more results for you. But then when you click on the categories tab and you scroll down and look at, you can look at the product service codes and the NAICS codes that the agencies are specifically purchasing. Or you can include, you know, the keyword, like I mentioned, janitorial services, for an example, and then pull up the agency as well, filter by those results, and go over to the, I think it's the category tab. I'm just thinking off the top of my head because I'm not looking at it on the screen. But um, the categories tab, and then look at the uh, product service codes and the next codes that way as well. So you can generate that information those different ways. How do we get a meeting in front? I'm sorry. I read that one. Does past performance need to be with the government? No, your past performance does not need to be with the government. Your past performance, and if you, you'll you notice that uh, some services, whether it's with federal government or government in general or localities or even, uh, you know, with school systems or, uh, you know, private companies, some services are the same. The systems may be the same. Maybe processes may be the same. I mean, um, the systems may be different, excuse me. Maybe processes may be slightly different, but what is needed and how to complete it will essentially be the same. So no, don't count that information out just because it wasn't with the federal government. Make sure you include that information in there as well. So going over, is there more than one type of capability statement? You have general, industry specific, and requirement specific. General is more so on the marketing side, conferences, websites. It includes everything that your business, uh, all the services that your business provides. There are, and I'll have an example of that um, in the latter slide, there are some businesses that provide services in multiple different industries, multiple different NAICS codes. So they would include that information on there. But when you start drilling down to industry or agency specific, or even requirement specific, which is what I've used so far, examples of for you to, um, those examples for you to document your information on your capability statement, you wanna make sure that you're not using too many. So for example, you got 15 NAICS codes that your business can provide services for when you are responding to requirement specific or agency specific ones, you wanna make sure you drill those down to about three. What exactly are they looking for? If they're saying that I'm just looking for 541611, you're not gonna include all of the other information that's on there. You may include just 541611 or maybe two others that are equivalent to that NAICS code. So for example, if you're providing services in different industries and they are just looking for that one industry janitorial services, but you actually also provide services on the IT side, if you're responding to a solicitation that is specific to janitorial services, you're not going to include any information uh, on the IT side. So I'm gonna pause on answering uh, more questions because I wanna make sure that I get through this information. I see it when we got 15 minutes. Um, let me zoom out for a second. So how should it be designed? As I mentioned before, you don't have to use these examples. This is the second example of the capability statement that you'll receive tomorrow within our package. You don't have to use this, but in this example you see at the top, those are logos, SCBUSB, Woman Owned Small Business, Hub Zone. This business is using their logos. This business also has their company, um, company logo at the top as well. What you see is in their About Us section, it says a short, sweet statement. I'm sorry, a short introduction statement. They have their section section out, which is what I'll be covering is some key areas in a minute. Uh, core competencies, past performance, company data. So previously when I mentioned that if you don't have a logo, which I do recommend using the logo so it's easily visible, but if you don't have a logo, for example, service disabled veteran owned small business that was 8 day certified, you could include that information in the company data section, but you see how the buyer could easily identify the uh, certifications of socioeconomic uh, classifications for the business because that certification information would be included in the company data section. So you wanna make sure that it is visually appealing. Uh, graphics, logos, font style, color scheme. I'm gonna send out because uh, I'm solo today, 
I don't have time to go back and try to find uh, a link, but there's a link, it's free, to help you to identify with your font color and your font background, whether or not it is 508 compliant. Because you wanna make sure when we say visually appealing, not just with the graphics, the logos, the font style and the size, but the color scheme. That's why I included it on there. You don't wanna necessarily use a red background and then yellow, yellow font. I don't know if anyone has ever seen that before, but it's not always easy on the eyes. And then you wanna think about who your audience is, the buyer. Are they colorblind or do they have any other type of, of you know, disability where they would not be able to read the information that you have on your capability statement? You also wanna make sure that it's one to two pages. Um, I know for some businesses, your general capability statement is gonna be longer. I do recommend for businesses with their general to be longer because it's gonna include all of your business information. But when we go back to, and I'm gonna come back for a second, industry agency specific or requirement specific, you want to keep it to one or two pages front and back. And you just want to make sure that you are documenting what your business does. Why should the buyer award this project to your business and not your competitor? Also look at what makes your business unique from your competitors. Those are those differentiators that I mentioned. And then why should the agency do business with you? Which essentially is you're going to be telling them you should do business with me because here are my capabilities. What you're looking for, I can already do. Here's my company data, what you're looking for, the set aside for a woman of small business. I already have the SBA certification for that. Look at my past performance or even current. We say past performance, we're talking about current projects that you're working on as well. Look at that information. Look at how my business services or my business products are actually benefiting the, um, the, my current client that I have. They are actually saving money. You know, they are act not necessarily saying um, sticky with saving money, but they're actually uh, saving on time as well. Whatever it may be, you can document that information on there. So here's close to the last uh, part of the capability statement, which is those impactful characteristics. You want to make sure that, and this is um, a recommendation, you include your about us section, core competencies past performance or your experience, differentiators, company data and information like I was mentioning before. So here's an example of impactful characteristics. Here's an example, first one, for about us. Veteran Office Small, and this is the name of my business uh, for everyone. This is the name of my business. It's called Veteran Office Small Business uh, for this uh, scenario. So Veteran Office Small Business has been in business since 2013, engineering and manufacturing, High performance lighting solutions for industrial applications. Our team of experts leverages cutting edge technology to create durable and energy efficient fixtures that meet client needs and safety requirements. I highlighted the name of my business. If your business, if in your business logo, you already have the name of your business because there are some businesses that only use like, for example, the abbreviations. Do not include the name of your business in your About Us section. As you can see down on the third example, we are a dedicated team of physicians. I didn't mention the business name because my business name is already mentioned. So I'd be duplicating the information. What you want to watch out for is duplicating any information on your capability statement. I told them in this About Us section that we um, offer services in engineering and manufacturing high performance lighting solutions. But in my core competencies, I'm not going to mention engineering and manufacturing high performance lighting solutions because that will be duplicating the information. So what I did was in my about us section, I went ahead and I used a high level um, example of what services my business provides. And then in my core competencies, I will include the information specific, whatever those capabilities are so that I'm not duplicating that information. And lastly, on this second example, at Veteran Owned Small Business, we have a passionate, um, we have been passionate, excuse me, about helping businesses thrive since 2021. That's letting them know that, hey, I've been in operation, uh, you know, since 2021. Our dedicated team combines meticulous attention to detail with a focus on environmental responsibilities to create stunning and sustainable outdoor spaces. I do not recommend for anybody to, any business, to include more than three sentences on your About Us section because your About Us section is not really going to sell. It's not gonna sell uh, your business services to the buyer. What they're gonna be looking for is more so in the core competency side, 
differentiators, past performance, and your company data and information, which I'll get into in a few seconds. So that's why I recommend, and these are just examples for any businesses that are looking to identify, hey, what exactly could I include in my About Us to keep it short, sweet, and simple? Because essentially everything about you, your business is gonna be on your business website. So you're just gonna take a little snippet of that information. Here's another example, core competencies. So as I mentioned before, I was gonna include an example. For this business, their core competencies, you see how it's um, the sections are bold, but then they're bullets for the subsections. Regulation and administration of communications, electric, gas, and other utilities. Food service contractors. Other electronic and precision equipment repair and maintenance. Different um, services, different industries. And so therefore, in this general capability statement, because you remember I stated, in the general capability statement, you include all of your core competencies. But when you're looking at the other examples of capability statements, for example, if this was being submitted for a food service uh, project, I would not include regulation and administration or electronic and precision equipment. Example three, past performance. On the past performance, you see the point of contact name is there, the date of the project and who the, the prime was. Um, excuse me, not prime, who the agency was or a prime or large business, whomever you were subcontracted with, if that was the case, and the city and state. And so in here, I said, we completed the installation of a new energy efficient plumbing system in their 50,000, I'm sorry, 50,000 square foot headquarters. Our team coordinated closely with electricians and HVAC contractors to ensure a smooth integration with existing systems. The project was delivered on time and within budget exceeding client expectations by achieving a 15% reduction in water usage compared to initial projection. We were commended for our clear communication, problem solving skills and meticulous attention to detail. So on your capability or within your past performance in your capability statement, sometimes businesses like to use the statement of work. But when you are documenting it on your capability statement, you don't just want to add hey, this is what the statement of work said, this is what I'm gonna include in there. You wanna make sure if you do use the statement of work, use one sentence, uh, shorten it, and then go into how did your business successfully perform on this project? How did your business services or your business pro um, product help your, you know, help this client? And in what way did it help this client? You may even, and I know that some businesses have worked on projects that are uh, confidential. So you wanna make sure if whatever you can include within that past performance that documents how your business will successfully perform on the project with this new client that you are pursuing, add that information in there. And again, these are just examples uh, that you can use. Here's another example of uh, past performance. So open the secondary ambulatory surgical center and successfully performed over 500 outpatient procedures with a 35 percent patient satisfaction rating we offered a comfortable and efficient environment ensuring minimal wait times not exceeding the national average of 45 minutes and a smooth experience for the veterans and their families so including that information in there about how your business um really it's a differentiator 45 minutes uh, you know, outside the national average is 45 minutes, and this business was able to perform, you know, within lesser time than that, and at a 35% patient satisfaction rating. Now, I knew you guys would get a little giggle out of that 35%, like, wow, that is very low. So that's why I added it in here, because I'm hoping that some of you all were able to get a laugh, like, wow, that's very low. That's nothing to be happy about. But these are examples. Um, that you can include of the data. Thank you, Kevin. I see one laugh on the screen. Kind of make sure that everyone isn't, uh, you know, asleep before we conclude here. But um, this is the information that you would include to show that, hey, my business can successfully perform on the contract. All right. And so in the differentiators, here's an example of a differentiator. We are a small business with a big, with big expertise. Our team's advanced certifications allows us to compete with larger firms while offering the personalized attention and agility you expect from a small business partner. That's not telling them anything. It's not telling the buyer, 
you know, what's supposed to be unique about your business from your competitors. But if you look at the other examples, rapid response times, 40% higher than the regional average. 24-7 live chat. Maybe your, your competitors don't have 24-7 live chat. They just have, you know, the, the little uh, chat box that pops up that's generated until somebody live comes on at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, plus a 30-minute response time guarantee. After the initial inspection, the system sends the client a digital report with photos and videos showcasing the problem areas. What if your, you know, competitors, they don't do that? They might do, you know, the initial inspection, and then they might follow up with, you know, one person. But where, you know, how beneficial is that digital report? and the, with the photos and the videos to keep for their records. Proficient in all operating systems and can recommend the best choice to optimize your workflow and maximize security. What if your, you know, cli um, not clients, excuse me, what if your competitors are not able, they may be proficient, but they're not proficient in all operating, uh, you know, systems, and they won't be able to re recommend the best choice. Then you can include that information in your differentiator section. Now for company data, this is what I essentially went over before, which is making sure that you include your UEI, your change code, your NATE codes. As you see, I have, I think, about six on here as an example. So we know that this would be more so a general capability statement because with the more specific ones, we want to make sure that we're drilling down to specifically what they're looking for. Um, I highlighted Dunn's number because I don't recommend for businesses that are still doing business with federal and state to remove Dunn's. But if you are submitting, so if you have your general capability statement, it's okay. Keep your DUNS number on there because some state and local um, areas are actually, um, they are looking for the DUNS number. The UEI is specific to federal. But when you're looking at specific capability statements, you want to kind of remove DUNS if you're just responding to federal agencies because they're no longer looking at the DUNS number. They're looking at the UEI. And then for contact information, um, I used my fake business as an example here, but I have my company logo, the name of my company, the address of my company, which is actually, a, aside from the sweet information, that's actually our address here at Ostabu, uh in Washington, D.C. I have the point of contact name, the point of contact email address, the point of contact phone number, as well as my business website. And so here's our contact information. I know we have about one minute that's left. So what I'll do is if there are any additional questions, I'll stay on for about 10 more minutes to answer any questions if you guys want to still stay on. But I just want to remind everyone uh, that this week we have started off is the National Small Business a Week for Virtual Summit. Um, so congratulations the, for all the small businesses that are on the call today. National Small Business Week serves several purposes, including recognizing and celebrating small businesses' vital role to the U.S. economy. Uh, this, this summit, it honors entrepreneurship, highlights economic impact, promotes resources and support, and raises public awareness about the importance of small businesses. And the Small Business Administration uses this week to acknowledge the hard work, dedication, and innovation of America's small business owners and entrepreneurs. It emphasizes the significant contribution of small businesses to the U.S. economy, and these businesses create new jobs. So that means you guys are creating new jobs and driving economic growth in communities nationwide. So if you are available, I recommend registering. If you haven't already to attend, you can go to the Small Business Administration website. And in honor of you know, uh, National Small Business Week, we actually have a small business training at the end of this week concerning marketing. Um, so if you haven't already signed up for that, go ahead and sign up for that. And I apologize, I forgot that I didn't include the link for VetBiz, so I'll include that information in the email that you receive tomorrow as well. So I'll go ahead and answer a few more questions. Oh, the, the chat wasn't that much. So I'll go ahead and answer a few more questions if anyone is still on from the chat. I meant, sorry, from the Q&A. Does past performance need to be government? I answered that one. Can any past performance be work done outside of context of your small business? For example, when you worked as a federal employee or military service member, yes. That information, and I believe that I forgot to cover that, but personal experience, you just want to make sure it's essentially no different than highlighting that your business actually performed the service. But you want to make sure that you're documenting that um, within that experience that you have, 
you were actually working for a business or you were working for a federal agency, but you gained the skills from working on whatever projects that was with that business or other federal agency, or when you were, um, you know, enlisted, include that, inf when you're including that information, you'll just document that those skills were obtained, you know, uh, you were there, you worked there. So that's how you obtained those skills and those skills are being used currently with your business. So sometimes uh, some businesses will try or some business owners will try to um, start a business and provide a service that they have never did before. And I like to use baking because I love food. So I use baking here. Never baked a day in my life, but I just decided, oh, I want to be a baker. And I want to compete with these other, my competitors who actually e either are bakers or have someone on their staff that is a baker. And so now I'm competing with them, but I need to document that, you know, I, how is my, you know, my baking going to be better than my competitor? Same thing with, let's just say, and I use this because it's kind of simple janitorial services. I've never, you know, provided any type of janitorial services with the Department of Veteran Affairs or with Health and Human Services. But I decided I want to go out here and I want to provide, you know, janitorial services for my business. I want to start a business that provides janitorial services. I need to highlight that I actually can perform on that project. So the third example I'm using here is I did provide janitorial services with Department of Veteran Affairs, and I did provide it with HHS. So when I go in and I write up my past performance, I'll stay employed with the Department of Veteran Affairs. I'll have the date on there between X time frame. You know, was the lead gen you know janitorial or uh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the name. So I'll just say lead facilities management. And you know, I provided X amount of services here. You know, worked with customer customer satisfaction ninety three percent. Those kind of things, that's how you, you can document that information on there when you're using your personal um, experience. I'm sorry, it moved up, so I just wanna make sure I find it. Work out done, okay. Can I use a sales pass performance during the bidding process? Um, so that depends. Is your, are you guys partnered together and you, both businesses are actually, um, let me let me go back because I didn't read your question correctly. The question was, can I use a sub pass performance during the bidding process? So you would document, you would not have their past performance on your capability statement. You could document that in your proposal that you are, you know, essentially partnering with this business and you have a sub who can provide the services that your business is lacking. So you can document that information within the proposal. Uh, lots of businesses do that when they're going into a partnership with each other, but I do not recommend that you document that on your business capability statement. Now, if you guys decided the, the two businesses form a joint venture and it's one entity, you can document that information on the capability statement then because you're taking those two businesses together and bringing them together their um their services and bringing them together, but you want to make sure that you you're also documenting because you don't want to misrepresent your business experience. That you know these are two businesses that combine together, and this was this you know the first business experience, and this is the second business experience. But as you can see, those businesses combine together. This is what the makeup of this new business is. If it's okay, I have used this affordable consulting firm that has assisted me with a previous business if anyone needs help, okay? Um, can I add the certification number for a small minority owned number if it's still getting certified by the state of California? Um, you can add the certification number for a small minority owned business, but if you just wanna include underneath the certifications that you are a small minority owned business, or you are you know, a minority owned small business, you can include that information underneath your business data. How do you write out a capability statement as a middleman, my company focuses on procuring multiple type goods and services, got government by using subs. Uh, Amanda, if you're still on the line, and if not, I'll reach out and, you know, once I generate this report and send you an email. Uh, let me, because I need a little bit more information, but I know I don't have enough time because I said I'll give about 10 minutes. Uh, send me an email at the OstaboostRat.com mailbox so that we could discuss further on how you could be able to document that on your capability statement. 
where do I find the marketing for small business training? Uh, if you go to our small business, our YouTube channel, excuse me, and that information will be included in our resources, but you go to our YouTube channel underneath marketing research, market research, excuse me, underneath the, um, I'm sorry, everyone, all the different sections, it playlist, that's what it is on YouTube. Underneath the playlist, it says market research. So you can click on that and then it'll open up. It'll be the first, um, we have about, I want to say five trainings and then six, the sixth one will be on Friday. So we would add that a section named skills on a capability statement versus underpass performance. No, your section for skills is your core competencies and your capabilities. You can call it whatever you like to call it. You can even say skills, uh, but core competencies and capabilities is essentially what you could, what you would consider is the skills section. What if your business currently doesn't have any employees? Can you still compete on those federal, state, local contracts? You can. And so during your market research, you can identify whether or not uh, additional employees would be needed for your business to successfully compete. There are some um, projects that a business does not have to have additional employees on staff to be able to perform on the, those. I can't speak to state and local but I have seen some on federal where there are businesses that have not had any past performance for their, their business, but they have had ex past experience from personal where they were able to provide those services. Can I use a sub past performance on my capability statement? I think I covered that before. As a sole member LLC and single person business, can I apply for contracts and hire subcontractors later? That essentially depends on what the requirements are, but yes, there are businesses that um, either operate with one or six uh, full-time employees, W-2 employees, and then all the rest of the jobs are, uh, any jobs for the business are uh, subcontractors. So that depends on how, you know, whatever's being requested, what the requirements are, as well as what would fit best for your business. You are going to send multiple examples to us, or there is a place to find more. I'm actually going to send an example we call a capability statement packet. It's three examples of uh, some capability statement templates that businesses could look at to either use, but you don't necessarily have to use that uh, template. Uh, but it, it gives you, it helps you, gives you a little push to help you along the way on identifying how you can either, um, whether it's the layout of it, or how to section out your capability statement. It's not really going to be helpful in terms of how to word the information on there. I do recommend if you're having a little difficulty with how you will word it, you reach out to us and we can offer you some um, examples during our one-on-one -on -one session or reach out to some of your other resources at the Small Business Development Center or the Apex Accelerator Advisors. All right, so I have reached the end of the Q&A and we are exactly at two, uh, 2.10. So I wanna thank everyone for uh, attending today for participating. Um, there is a survey at the end. Once this session concludes, please complete the survey. This helps us to identify whether or not these new trainings or updated training sessions that we are including within our series, if they are beneficial to you, the business owner. Everyone have a good rest of your Monday.